Today's date is September 1st, 2020, Tuesday. The time is approximately 12.50 p.m. I'm on notebook 37, page number 3057. I'm just currently in my uh, a tent, homeless, at my grandmother's residence. I put my voice recorder on uh, for the fact that I uh, very, very well may uh, reduce this to transcripts right now or later. Uh, this video is being made to the attention of uh, Mayor Brian Bowman, City of Winnipeg, uh, RCMP Commissioner Brenda Lucky, uh, FBI Director Chris Way, uh, Relative Jamie Hastings, and Bri uh, Premier Brian Pallister for the Manitoba government. And uh, this could also, uh, what I'm about to um, disclose here is sensitive information, uh, allegations, and um, I'm alleging that there's a rash of organized serial murders being committed on my family or towards my family or even other families um, preventable um, but the evidence that is uh, starting to accumulate uh, shows that um, that the uh, suspects in this case uh, goes back as far as uh, starting as uh, February 2012 when uh, a series of uh, birthday conspiracy incidents within the correctional system and court, uh, Winnipeg Law Courts building resulted. So uh, the uh, death of my mother, um, I'm alleging they got so comfortable after the uh, the conspiracies of the birthdays, of the commit murder on me and my brother, that after the birthdays, they moved on to the uh, complaint, or rather uh, t-shirting my mother. That's the day Lori Dawson came to tell me of uh, my mother, or attempting to tell me that my mother had uh, may have cancer with my brother Brayden. I uh, pushed her out of the room, and I'll give the story another time. But on the back of this shirt, it says uh, volunteer. Okay, so and what I'm going to be alleging is that this shirt and uh, Danny Smythe's signature here of uh, receiving the, the complaint of a complaint of a uh, October 4th go hand in hand because they didn't she didn't confirm it that day it was October 4th that uh, they confirmed it the following day but it was the same thing so I look at that and I also think well I've seen October 3rd I thought before and I try to think oh they're doing birthday hits or doing certain days and uh, these two items have uh, come to my mind to tell me that um, there could be some kind of signature here for uh, police hits. This looks like old rape police hits and I'm uh, concerned the October 3rd uh, suicide of uh, Winnipeg Police Constable Trent Milan uh, may uh, may have been a victim in uh, these organized uh, murders, serial murders. So he could very well possibly be a victim of organized serial murders here in uh, Winnipeg being committed by various organized crime groups and uh, police, unknown police uh, groups. So I just thought I'd bring that up and um, I'll uh, elaborate further on this. I know at first uh, when you first hear it, it doesn't make sense, but this one has to do that. This t-shirting has to do with the May 13th, 2017 incident with Constable Jason Sousa um, and uh, Corey Ford. And then uh, I have also seen a Winnipeg Remand Center guard by the name of Marcus Kruger. He kind of looks like uh, a term uh, the Terminator actor, I think from Terminator 4. Um, but he works at the uh, Winnipeg Remand Center. Um, the last time I seen Marcus, he was involved in another incident where uh, he was a supervisor and he didn't, he, uh, uh, incident, a, a serious incident, a violent one, uh, went undetected for approximately five minutes and uh, someone uh, s um, received some uh, serious injuries between them. So what I'm uh, this video, I'm gonna make it quick, as quick as I can. So I indicated that I'm uh, disclosing organized serial murders and yesterday I made a lengthy video but before I go any further I just want to show that I'm on the notebook here and that uh, I just want to go through a few pages just to show that uh, I'm keeping track of my time and what I'm doing so I'm alleging the uh, organized serial murders is going to be a part of um, high treason crimes against humanity working its way to high treason political and police high treason I don't know all the facts but I have a, a case that looks, I need to report everything and I haven't because I've been intimidated by the uh, police and government uh, and it will be evident as to why, why I uh, feel that way. So, and these are just notes just to show this is me making these allegations. Okay. And that's uh, 
I also just want to bring up right here that I'm asking uh, Mayor Brian Bowman himself and uh, Premier Brian Pallister uh, that if I can receive immediate witness uh, protection under the uh, criminal charges that I'm going to be laying against a uh, considerable amount of uh, police officers and uh, things like that. Uh, more specifically, I'm asking for witness security, so I'm asking if you guys can accommodate me under the Witness Security Act uh, into a, a hotel for now, and that uh, this would be under the uh, provision of the that I'm pursuing charges that criminal prosecution will uh, come about, high profile ones I might add, against the Winnipeg police and that obviously I'm being intimidated into homelessness and that uh, you know witness protection is obviously warranted in my case considering that I'm going to be filing charges against the officers responsible. I'm just going to put this right now. So now that I'll keep on peace, what I'm trying to disclose is that uh, but I made a complaint submission against my landlord. I dropped it off at City Hall, same with a human trafficking complaint. And um, I, I have my copy here. I'm asking, I'm going to be asking for the copies back from City Hall, FIPA. But I have what I put and there's, you know, exactly what in their hand transcripts. I, I could do more, but I thought they would have talked to me by now. Maybe got me into <clears throat> some kind of... <clears throat> accommodation but they haven't the police have came here but they're coming here and talking to my grandmother behind my back and asking her not to speak to me so the uh, police officers who came here and did that in respect to my complaints i'm going to ask for them to be charged for uh, criminal harassment and um, whatever criminal offenses may arise from uh, that kind of conduct um, so and I, I left i just wanted to note that they felt there was inappropriateness and some people could be offended but i'm protected by human rights political um uh, beliefs. There's a uh, human rights that uh, protects my put political beliefs and all of this. Everything that I'm complaining about, the images, it's all protected under human rights and charter, um, constitutional rights. So um, if I offend people, I don't mean to. I'm going to slow down and I'm just going to present uh, the facts. But I do a lot of this because presenting facts just in uh, letters and computers and emails, it doesn't catch much interest. So I'm going to do it this way. And when someone comes and talks to me and tells me that um, maybe it's too much and then obviously I will uh, respectfully uh, respect people's not wanting to see some of this stuff but I sent um, that and I put uh, it was in black and white there's no there was no color these are colored so I just wanted to say that uh, I'm going to give an explanation why I put that and I'm going to be going to going to be saying that um, I'm going to be alleging my former landlord uh, Brendan Ryan is a uh, most uh, liable or uh, probable suspect for the uh, conspiracy and first degree uh, murder of my mother Karen Hastings and um, he uh, participated in a conspiracy with the Winnipeg police on July 19th or yeah 19th 2020 that led to my uh, illegal eviction the <laughs> Sorry about that. Mayor Brian Bowman should have possession of the uh, complaint materials of what happened and what I'm alleging. I provided evidence that I lawfully held a tenancy under law and that uh, what they did was illegal and that I was uh, entitled to a tenancy here and given the circumstances and they haven't done that. I've been homeless for about 50 days. So right here there's a long list of uh, documents and i'll slowly go through them quickly as i can to prove a list of organized serial murders including happy birthdays and t-shirtings and things like that and it's going to be directed towards the not directed but uh implicating the canadian government in the winnipeg law courts building um, but again this is things can turn out different and people can be adding to the drama so and I also want to report that I've lost the uh, original complaint response from Chief Judge Margaret Weave regarding uh, Judge Tim Preston. Uh, I made some comments and I kind of slept on it and I regret saying some things. I, I, I can't confirm if I even seen that um, man, uh, Judge Tim Preston, in the area that I said. Um, for the complaint, I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to report a possible theft. Uh, not for the point, not for the purpose of me wanting to complain uh, or pursue complaints against Preston, but rather that uh, I have more than enough to uh, pursue my complaints and that um, I'm not, you know, thoroughly interested in pursuing Preston because I could and it's, it's not that, uh, I don't think it's that bad for that, that judge anyway. Um, so anyways, um, I'm going to show the documents here. And um, this is going to establish, and uh, I hope people are not offended. And Jamie, don't get offended. Uh, keep this to yourself. Uh, you, may, you may be a little uh, shocked or stunned. I don't know, but we'll see. But uh, this proves that the uh, 
Canadian government, the RCMP, the Winnipeg Law Courts building, the Winnipeg Police are uh, permitting and what's going to be identified as crimes against humanity towards our family. They're uh, allowing for the uh, conspiracy crimes of uh, conspiracies to commit murder, intimidation, uh, police kidnappings, um, you know, things like that. So I have, um, and it's led to actual murders and uh, to my mother's murder in a, a government hospital. So just, um, I'll start from here. All right. I don't smoke. I don't want to give a reason. My phone cut off last night when I was giving the reason. So I kind of think that uh, there's a fraud going on. So I bought, my grandmother gave me a pack and I'm going to be honest. That's why I kind of want, I'm going to be out in public showing that I'm smoking because I think that uh, I might've got played into something as well. So I want to make sure that uh, I'm not being, you know, and I, I'm not, I normally don't smoke. I'm not going to continue smoking. This is something that I don't, uh, that I want to do exactly, but I'm stressed out. I can't spend my money on weed all the time, so I thought I'd take a break and do the cigarette thing. So, <sighs> so this is also a memory of my mother, Karen Hastings, right, uh, right there. Subject to a obvious first degree conspiracy murder. She, uh, her most proudest moment would be the uh, volunteer award right here. Uh, on the back of Lori's shirt here, it uh, has a on the back full patch volunteer, but it hopefully it may not be as bad as it seems. Um, and now the reason I say that is because I, I uh, got along with Lori. Sometimes some days were grumpy, but I didn't I, I didn't have an overall sense that she, uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know. People have good fucking game faces, but we'll see what happens. Um, so that's my mom's proudest moment, and um, what I'm alleging is this is a crime of passion. Because there's other people turning up dead, and I'm able to prove patterns of uh, probably wealthy families. I would I would think uh, unspecified. I can't prove it though. Definitely the courthouse. Um, I don't know if it's the Mounties or someone uh, manipulating the complaints at the Mounties or how this is happening. But uh, they're picking dates on uh, their complaint responses that are landing on the uh, dates of uh, where they tried to have me murdered. And I'm able. I'm also identifying uh, government asset misappropriation of employment fraud. Uh, respecting certain names that identify offenders for certain treatments, um, which include uh, probably Marcus Kruger, for example. So I think Kruger would mean a uh, sex offender, like uh, Freddy Kruger. Uh, there's also the Reed. The Reeds from uh, the Canadian government, RCMP in Ottawa, uh, was uh, put on that program. It's where they put you, put you in for uh, birthdays and they try to kill you with all their organized crime groups. <laughs> So, and, if, and when you read read backwards, it says die I rent, or in, my, in a, one of the cases, Darcy. And I think there's a, a fraud going on with the Darcy Rose. I'm not sure about that. This is also to say I report made a video about the Canadian government conspiracies while I was in custody and uh, those are in fact Canadian government conspiracies to intimidate me and commit organized crime. So I'm also asking for witness protection from Bo well, well Bowman can jumpstart it that would be nice and uh, Premier Pallister um, so we'll see what happens there. So, this is a, a notice, and I'm saying I had lawful tenancy, and this is going into respect of uh, this right here, my complaint to Mayor Brian Bowman. Jamie, my uh, relative, is the witness. Um, thorough complaints. I uh, put in a property claim as well, and I'm going to put in more by tomorrow, hopefully. <coughs> but uh, here's the original documentation. This is the notice. So, to the net tenant. And this also <coughs> verifies that uh, this is a legal notice under law, under the uh, Renancy Tenancy Act, I believe. So this was under law. He made a, a notice to me under law because I was the tenant. So he could have served me an eviction notice from the time of April 7th until the time of uh, July 19th, and he didn't. So what I'm alleging, and this was all illegal, I'm homeless, I'm asking for accommodation under the Residency Tenancy Act and the Witness Security Act, also given, given what I'm about to disclose here. So, uh, Brennan, here's uh, his original signature, my uh, 
EIA worker had released a rent form and the only way I would be able to get rent funds from the Manitoba government would be through the release of Brendan's signature and information on the rent form here and there it is. So this verifies I had a lawful tenancy of that uh, residence. And uh, right here, here's the color version. And the reason I put an aqua key in, the, in that, I'll give a reason for that. And uh, hopefully people are not intimidated by that because I'm saddened by that. And sometimes, you know, sometimes that's my way of expressing myself that, you know, but I don't mean to intimidate people or nothing like that. So it's not, not the intent to have anyone intimidated. But uh, my mother, when she passed away, the, the aqua on her urn there, her, uh, that's what was given to her on November, uh, given to me and my brothers on uh, our family on November 6th. I, I call it the Karen Fulham Day. So I look at his key, his treatment, the human trafficking incident, the conspiracies with the police here. I have reason to believe that Brendan Ryan is most likely a probable suspect in my mom's uh, murder conspiracy. And that uh, he's a lot of, now he's a suspect in a conspiracy to commit intimidation and a theft of my property, which I'm going to be alleging could have been an act of an accessory to murder for trying to get rid of all the aqua, or rather the uh, burgundy items, including, uh, I named them already. So there's that. And going on to the next page, this I uh, kind of made a collage of uh, the front page newspaper of uh, when I was at. Uh, 12 years old right here, it's all black though. And there's some images there. There's a car there and the license plate says GMA Birds. And what happened uh, May 9th, 2020 and November 6th, 2019, um, it's pretty deep. And it, and it took me to the memory of Nathan O'Brien and the things they're willing to do. There was a trailer that was parked behind there too. And when my mother passed away, there was a picture of a trailer burnt out next to the Darcy Rose uh, homicide. So I'm concerned that uh, that's what uh, prompted me to put those uh, pictures up. And I don't mean to offend the families. Um, for example, I'm having a cigarette because uh, my mother, I should have shared some smokes with her. But that's her right there and her saying boo. That's her enjoying her last uh, bit of uh, air and cigarettes, smiling, struggling to keep her face up, smiling for her boys. So that's why I put that there. Okay, and I don't mean to offend people, but when you see the intimidation and the taunting and mimicking they've done, great to, you know, that um, you guys would hopefully be able to understand and that I won't uh, obviously publish these uh, images publicly. Not yet, anyway. Let's see where it goes. <clears throat> so, this would be my mom, her most proudest moment. Well, she could be proud of her uh, son, Curtis. <laughs> hey, she put that there. So, that's why I put that there. So, on the volunteer. So in the uh, May 9th incident, before I go any further, um, kind of reminds me almost like a statement like, oh, that was supposed to be your son or something because uh, the boy was approximately, I would say five to seven years old. And uh, his name was Darius, no pants on. And uh, I thought back to all the incidents of May 9th and May 7th and uh, May 9th sticks out to me from uh, an incident. Um, I won't get into the details, but it has to do with uh, a pair of socks. And I'll leave it at that for now. And I think uh, Mounties, senior Mounties may have stuck it out for me. I don't know what the circumstances, or maybe they haven't. I embarrass them so much that they want to frame me for a uh, child murder, a horrific one it looks like. So I'm really uh, shocked by that case, really stunned by that one. And the second drowning in Darius really concerned me. It looked like a cover-up almost. But uh, when I went into, um, after the February 5th warrant, my granny, I went into Headingley, and I was assaulted by guards for really no reason. And uh, the police, they uh, intimidated me to pretty well retract my statement, the guards and the police. And uh, they uh, committed their crime on May 9th. They came back and completed their crime by retracting a statement on May 9th. Right, so I uh, have reason to believe that uh, this most likely has to do with uh, possibly Mr. Irvin Ferris, because when I was in uh, Agassiz Youth Center, he uh, would, uh, there was a um, you know a consequence it wasn't too bad but uh, it was tough and you would have to grab your pants and stand in the corner hold them and there was a place where they had have a garbage and I don't mean to offend Mr. Ferris by this because he wasn't the one sitting there doing it to us it was uh, the staff but it was uh, in his unit so that's why I, I bring this up so who knows I think that maybe Mr. Ferris took some pride in me somewhere along the way and maybe told the stories about what he you know the, 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 the uh, discipline and uh, someone took it a step further here. And uh, that's my nephew Christopher with his Hot Wheels. Looking at those pants. 
<laughs> so this would be the complaint where they uh, released or you know closed frame uh, where they came in retractable statement <clears throat> so and I just I just made a you know a little glossary for just photos and this is in respect to uh, the shirt of uh, Lori Dawson and I chose to pick this one as my uh, photo cover for my t-shirt for uh, in memory of Christopher James Spear and uh, you know just just the kind of guy I am but uh, that's what I put in response for today and if anyone is to ask hey what's this that's a bread clip I found in my house but this right here this is uh, was part of uh, my mom's funeral package where they put it in and they can uh, for her uh, urines there you go. so and I was stunned when Lori gave me her shirt I was a bit blown away by that so but, uh, this is mine and I made this and here's a list this has to do with uh, see my month uh, October 3rd volunteer worthy here's a, a, a list of all the uh, some of the birthday conspiracy hits that started in the correctional system and I have uh, evidence of on October 3rd with starting with food manage as well so I'm a bit concerned this was a obvious possible long-term hit the sequence of uh, Incidents that transpired on my mom's sickness starting May, uh, September 26 at me calling 911. That would be the day that of a Salisbury robbery in 2006. Um, my mom got sick. I ended up calling 911, and I uh, have a reason to believe that people were uh, covertly entering our residence, or even possibly Michael Fox and his girlfriend. But there could have been other ways or means, and they were uh, probably administering uh, cancer toxins or even other uh, toxins to make her uh, very sick. So I have reason to believe my mom was uh, tormented throughout the years through uh, sickness and I'm concerned that they could possibly be doing that with my Uncle Brian, but I don't want to, um, you know, bark up that tree just yet. I, I don't know. But it could just my mom was a sick lady as well. So that'd be a horrific, horrific conspiracy crime to do to a family if that's what was going on. So, and that's why I have this red sweater on because in the reman, um, I'll tell the story later on. But this sweater's for my mother and a few others. Felicia Sullivan too, I would say. So there's my mother's most proudest moment, and that was a part of the couch because uh, the last few months with my mother was uh, pretty, pretty stressful, and uh, you know. But uh, part of her shirt. I'll get a story about her shirt later, and there's the volunteer award. That'd be Henry Swampy. I believe he's a federal Mountie. He may be involved in the Patrick Chief Christian obituary. I'm not sure. So, and here's uh, one of my photos. See, and these people may be offended a little bit, but like I said, I'm protected under human rights, under political belief. And when, if they ask me kindly to say, hey, Curtis, can we not do that? That's uh, not a problem. I, I like to laugh, and I hope some of them would find it humorous. Uh, so, and this is the most damning information or claim that I have right now, is that uh, when I was at the hospital, there was a couple, and her, her name was Karen as well. So I was really suspicious by uh, some of the activities. But uh, as you can see, uh, someone came into my mother's room. I was standing on a certain uh, side of the bed. But these couple came in, and the way they came in, you can tell they were uh, directed to. It was a uh, precision uh, um, harassment activity. And when they came in, they were able to... Uh, go over and bend like you know reach over and shake my mother's hand and it was an awkward moment and when the guy reached over in this color green right there it uh it, it said skidoo but they covered it i forget what's about how but uh and it read kid do so and i have a complaint uh a complaint that i made right here that was reached by uh, i'll keep going so i have reason to believe that my mother was murdered it was a government hit and that uh, the kid do thing represented uh, the May 9th. So I think of my nephew and uh, all of the victims there and I think of that. So and this is one of the earlier pictures I took. There's a, a memory mem of how I got the shirt from Lori. Uh, it's all recorded. Um, you know, her purse is the burgundy, uh, Christopher Spear, the feather that she gave us. Um, this is the first box she ever came in with. A lot of this, uh, some of the stuff was stolen. My mother just caught the that was lost during their uh, sweep there. So now in respect to uh, the organized serial murder of my family, the uh, one of the first ones would start with uh, Dewan Smith. Uh, 
April 12, 2018. And what would happen here is uh, she allegedly committed suicide with uh, no pants on and the police admitted that it uh, looked a bit suspicious, but uh, they uh, didn't uh, elaborate too much on that, that, that it was a bit uh, suspicious. Uh, suspicious. Uh, obviously, in my opinion, it was a homicide. Uh, what concerned me about this is the day that she uh, passed away, I uh, withdrew a complaint and uh, on the day she passed away, I received this complaint for, um, response from the Canadian government here. And they said, I would expect the response by May 9th, 2018. And uh, this is what concerns me is, uh, so after Dewan passing away, I get this, May 9th coming up, this is the envelope that uh, came from, well, I, I have the originals. On May 9th, Tyler and Sherry get together. Um, you know, I don't think Tyler, I, I, I don't know the circumstances, but Tyler and Sherry get together and they uh, complete a mental health act form on May 9th. Uh, it's able to tell that Sherry was the one who instigated this. This is her writing. She denies it. Tyler's, uh, he's pretty upfront about it. So he can have whatever defense he wants, but I'm pursuing a uh, uh, conspiracy to commit uh, intimidation and fabrication of evidence. So what happens is he, they go before a staff justice and they uh, tried try to stop me from complaining about a, a government conspiracy, if you will. And uh, government conspiracy will entail uh, the things that I'm complaining about, Stony Mountain, a gang uh, conspiracies commit murder, that's what I meant. It evolved into a government conspiracy is what I'm going to be alleging. Um, so in the concern of these mental health act forms is it was signed by Justice Jaquetta and Tyler confirmed that there was only one justice and there's three signatures for two other ones. So there's one for the Dickinson and the Lachinsky. So those signatures were forged by a Justice Jaquetta who's a conflict of interest in my case. The first, she's uh, the original witness to a Dana Harvey for an earlier incident of May 9th, 2016 at the Winnipeg Law Courts building. Um, I'm able to prove that Dana Harvey and Josie Dupuy had uh, acted and committed a criminal conspiracy to prosecute an innocent person. Uh, fabricating evidence and uh, some other things here. Uh, Justice Jaquetta became uh, the witness and testified on uh, in um, Dana Harvey's uh, favor and I'm able to prove a major contradictory that uh, these uh, um, at least Justice Jaquetta may have um, been faulty in her testimony. The other justices outright just denied and said right to the point I nope not involved or nope and I'll, uh, so I'll leave it at that. <coughs> But uh, what happens is I get charged for uttering threats. Uh, this, what, this uh, as in the Stony Mountain, I get charged. I did not make the threats. Uh, Justice uh, Dickinson, the one, same one that signed this form, which is from Jakarta, commits perjury with the police and does not uh, swear or sign in the uh, charges for the uh, uttering threats. This, that leads to the uh, Winnipeg Remand Center incident where someone was seriously injured, and I'll get into that later. Put this down. I'm already on 30 minutes. I might have to make a second video. So, and then there's also uh, a letter that I received from uh, Paul Vuk Manich. And uh, the letter, it uh, arrived. He dated it September 16th, 2013, I believe. And it was sent out, or 14th, sent out October 3rd. And I noticed, again, with the precision of government conspiracy murders here within the correctional system and what's going on with my family, I have reason to believe this is evidence of a uh, major conspiracy, a major hit on my family, probably to truck out our family, it looks like. Um, and Vuk Manich is a high-profile offender implicating uh, former Prime Minister Stephen Harper. Office, not in, in any criminal activity, but just the case. And... Um, so this case is very implicating, this uh, thing. And I have the images, I'm gonna photocopy this and send this out to whoever may, uh, may uh, look at that. And again, the, the scary part is the Patrick Chief Christian homicide, the October 3rd, the September 16th, that, that's the day of uh, this news article release for the Patrick Chief Christian homicide right here. Uh, that would be a memory of uh, Patrick, who was uh, found shot to death uh, behind uh, this 419 Mantua Avenue residence. Um, so the uh, alarming part is, um, this is another conspiracy, I won't get into it, by the Justice Department to release me. And uh, this is uh, one of the incidents that uh, my name probably got brought up in. Um, there's uh, concerns with the obituary. I have uh, the police were seeking the identity of the homicide victim um, about a week later after the homicide or five days or so after and they had no idea they were asking the public they were asking for the family and they couldn't find him 
The next day or during that time, someone's the, the, the police were asking for help to ID the victim, Winnipeg police. Someone went and authored an obituary here. And uh, the obituary is a bit, uh, hopefully it's, I don't know, but it looks like someone was trying to attempt to leave no evidence of this guy, of this uh, victim uh, existing. Um, so I'm concerned that uh, there's a major incident behind this uh, homicide incident and uh, it implicates the Justice Department and probably the uh, police, unknown police sources. I plan on giving a statement for this, but I'll uh, leave it at that for now. I don't want to go into it too thoroughly now. Um, I also have reason to believe when I, my brother Tyler Hastings has been attempting to encourage me to get my identification, but I'm concerned my, identif my uh, IDs and things like that, government documents are being manipulated. I don't know who, by, by some source, I'm not sure. But the April 14th, and some other conversations I had with people leads me, uh, leads me to believe that um, I'm being subject to identity theft. So I just want to bring that. And this is going to be a cover photo of my complaint. This would be the complaint right here that uh, Tyler and Sherry said I was complaining about government conspiracies, and that I was delusional, and they uh, had me put in the mental health institution. Um, I'm going to be alleging that's accessory to the things I was complaining about. So it's uh, and they, they uh, involved themselves in a major conspiracy with Justice Jakarta. So I have reason to believe that this is all accessory to organized crime and police corruption. That's uh, mounting to obvious conspiracies and uh, to commit murder and actual murders. I'm also concerned that this uh, the, the RCMP were uh, profiling me for a sex offender, a child sex offender, most likely, and that I was a risk to children. And I have reason to believe. Um, well, I'm going to use this uh, their, their response letters here to uh, use it in the May 9th, 2020 incident. And the reason for that is because this uh, complaint was supposed to be handed to the Professional Responsibility Unit or, uh, you know, the Internal Affairs, but they gave it to the Integrated Child Exploitation Unit. And the Winnipeg Law Courts were openly calling me uh, a pedophile in 2016. So I'm concerned that, uh, you know, that that's what uh, they're trying to set me up for here. And this is just a letter confirming that the RCMP never uh, forward the uh, case the uh, April 14th case over to uh, the RC or to the prosecutor so I don't know what the case is exactly or what the circumstances are and this is just evidence of my uh, documentation uh, the scary part now is going into Stony Mountain I was released for six months coming back uh, immediately I was advised by uh, by institutional staff uh, in September of 2010 that uh, my life could be, uh, or my safety was, was in question over gang members, the Bloods, uh, Jordan Morcott, that they wanted me to leave the range. I wasn't supposed to be in general pop. They allowed me and I stayed out there. Uh, by law, I was supposed to be in segregation or in a gang range. Uh, they, they didn't uh, come to get me. They said they were gonna move me to a different range, so nothing would happen. And then on September 16th, uh, again, this is a preventable incident, inmate Jordan Morcott, one of the uh, prison gang leaders, I uh, had told someone that they were going to make a move on me and that they were going to stab me or beat me, I don't know. But um, I already had some issues with the, the gang. I lived on their range and I made a decision before I got back to their range to get beaten up that I would uh, stab, uh, stab their leader in front of everyone. And I ended up, uh, he was uh, ended up stabbing, uh, stabbed approximately 16 to 17 times on, uh, this was uh, caught on video. And you're able to tell someone that tampered with the video as well. Uh, about a year later, I wasn't charged for quite some time, and uh, I believe due to corruption involved in that case, and uh, someone had uh, made up a, a warrant under the Reed. February 5th, they tried to uh, serve this, but it ended up being uh, February 7th. But a uh, constable uh, Reed here had uh, made this a war warrant in conjunction with uh, this report, but there was no laying out of an information. So there was no charge, it was just a warrant and the courthouse allowed this to go through, meaning that was a major conspiracy and the result of this crime resulted in the April 14th incident at Stony Mountain. So there's motive behind all these uh, courthouse corruption crimes. I'm also concerned and read, when you read it backwards, it uh, it's also indicates die our end and the April 14th analyst from Ottawa who accepted the, com the complaint incident on the attempted murders was also a read. So I have reason to believe that uh, this is most likely misappropriation of uh, fraud and that uh, they're uh, designating certain uh, people or uh, offenders with these names to be targeted in prison or by organized crime group within Canada. 
So while I was in custody, several incidents happened. I was at the Heavenly Correctional Center. I ended up uh, taking a pl uh, plea there in Sawchuck and Attorney Tara Walker, and their legal work convinced me to uh, accept the plea bargain. Uh, I didn't realize at the time, but a lot of these uh, days were hitting on the birth dates of my family, the sentencing hearing, court dates, everything hits on birthdays, all major incidents. It's very, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty frightening. So this letter implicates uh, Tara Walker and her firm, her former firm, and uh, major corruption with the courthouse conspiracy level. Uh, this, uh, this confirms the May 7th uh, hearing on Christopher's birthday that had me sent to Stony Mountain. This is a, a judicial document. And uh, this confirms my arrival to Stony Mountain, the charges and uh, the things I was there for. Uh, I went to Edmonton, but going from Edmonton into uh, Stony Mountain again, the April 14th incident happened. Uh, the uh, RCMP, N. Reed, you read it backwards, Dari R.N. had sent me to Stony, an incident happens. Uh, the RCMP warrant can be identified as a conspiracy to prosecute an innocent person with the result of uh, kidnapping and false imprisonment resulting in the uh, attempted murders of uh, several individuals. So this is a major case and uh, this is a document from Ottawa. And I see that they took no legal policy government directive action, they closed it and didn't want to talk about it. That's apparently Lori. McDonald's signature. So this is a very important uh, document right here. This implicates Ottawa and organized crime. Uh, apparently this would be uh, Lori McDonald and uh, the Commissioner for Corrections. So I would uh, suspect this lady could face criminal charges for her uh, conduct involved in that investigation. Uh, the RCMP, this case, the April 14th case, actually uh, implicates uh, the RCMP in uh, BC, or at least the Correctional Service. I don't know the facts or what happened. But Ernesto Kershane was alleged to have ordered the attempted murders of me and my brother and several others. He was never charged. He was immediately, well not immediately, but he was sent to, to uh, BC Kent Max Institution. While he was there, he was uh, stabbed apparently 20 times. No offenders were charged in that case. Um, that would implicate the RCMP in that province in uh, organized crime. Uh, and given that this is being linked to a major conspiracy from Manitoba, that uh, the uh, BC RCMP are most likely going to be implicated in uh, this conspiracy for accessory and whatever it may be, or cor or corrections or the corrections kind of I don't know. Um, this book right here, Lori's T-shirt. These are volunteer dimes and uh, the Grace Hospital. What this represents is this book was given to me from or to my mother at her uh, bedside. Uh, at the Graves Hospital by Sherry Fox or Weeb or whatever you want to call her. And uh, uh, it was all aqua stories for her mom's heart and uh, roses on it. Her brother killed Darcy on, allegedly Darcy Rose on October 24th. So I uh, take that as a sign as uh, taunting and teasing. Um, so I'm pretty uh, disheartened that Sherry's uh, uh, that wicked towards uh, people that uh, she knows. Um, so anyways, uh, stories for a mom's heart. I don't want to get into it. Uh, there's a reason, I think there's a reason for the aqua. I sent in a FIPA application for the attention of uh, Judge Joyle and Amy Forte right here. Uh, the Premier's office accepted, or not the Premier, but the legislator. I, I have the originals. I don't want to get into it, but the allegations in the aqua would be somewhat disturbing, but I don't want to get into it. There's a question, reason for the aqua most likely. Uh, in respect to the organized serial murders here of um, of um, my uh, mother, uh, Karen Lynn Hastings, uh, Uncle Douglas Carl Hastings, and the attempted murder of um, my brother Chris Hastings has me concerned that the uh, uh, Winnipeg Law Courts building is taunting and mimicking that I'm able to establish that uh, they attempted to kill me numerous times or major incidents on the birth dates. Now they turn around and shifted their uh, focus on the dates of uh, the complaints that I'm sending, sending them. So I'm concerned that uh, after my mother, she I explained the t-shirt dates, she passed away on October 24th, uh, 2019. And then on uh, November 6th, we received her ashes, her urine right there on November 6th. And that would be the day of the, this letter I got from the Winnipeg Law Courts building from a Karen Fulham respecting a complaint. And, uh, I found it suspicious when I received this letter. Uh, you know, I thought that it looked like someone was forging. I thought that was my mother forging the signature, and she always denied it. And Sherry tried to blame her for it, and um, you know, so I suspect fraud. And then when, yeah, okay.
Yeah. I uh, I'm doing I'm doing fine. How are you doing? I'm good. Listen, you had sent a voicemail to Erwin Ferris and Nathan Petto. Uh, yes, I have. You left the message, eh? So I mean, they just wanted us to give you a call. Is there something we can do for you? Or? Um, I was going to ask. Um. Thank you for calling, by the way. I'm working on some very sensitive uh, materials right now. I'm making a YouTube video. Okay. And if you could direct Mr. Ferris and uh, Nathan to the uh, my YouTube account, that, okay. that that explains everything and maybe they'd be able to understand and okay, what, so what it... No, I'm not a big... Uh, so is there a site they need to go to? Or what? Yeah, yeah, I have one set up and uh, um, if, you, if you have a pen, I can give it to you. Okay, and it's uh, the name of, it's a Google account, and the name is uh, Curtis, so K-U-R-T-I-S. K-U-R-T-I-S. Yeah, uh, 2019. 2019. Dash, 44. 44. Dash, 815. 815. Hastings, H-A-S-T-I-N-G-S. Okay, so Curtis. 2019 dash 44 dash and then did you say dash 815? Yes, 815. 815 and what's after the 815? Hastings, my last name. Hastings. Yeah, and that'll be YouTube. Okay, and that'll direct them to it? Yeah, and um, yeah, just tell him, say, I think for the next uh, couple, several days, couple days, he's going to be yeah. posting videos and whatever he needs to know from and them. That'll, that'll tell him what, what your concerns are, etc. So. Yes. Yeah, All right, thank you very much. Can I get your name again? Sergeant Brewer, Okay, thank you very much, Sergeant. Welcome, sir. All right, bye. Sergeant Brewer. That was at 1.30. I might have to start a second video here, but uh, that's good to hear that uh, Mr. Ferris is listening to some of this stuff. I sent him a message about my concerns of heavy construction. Anyone would say they were paranoid, but I'm concerned for people's safety, and um, I just want to make sure that uh, I would say that. Not mentally ill. I'm just freaked out for people's safety, that's all. So, what was that number? One, Sergeant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this video because it's been 30 minutes. I'm going to bring out the the organized serial murders. I'm going to post this one, but um, just know that I'm uh, happy that Mr. Ferris called. I, I don't mean to involve him in this stuff, but uh, um, I, I haven't spoken to him. Probably there's good reasons for that, but uh, again, I think uh, people are taking, uh, you know, they're killing kids kind of deal and they're killing my family. and. Um, if there's anyone that I'd go to, it would be uh, probably Mr. Ferris, John O'Donovan. I don't know how John feels about me exactly, but uh, I, in my opinion, he's a good cop. He was a face for the police here. So I'm going to stop this video, and uh, this is this is just the show. These are the organized serial murders here. And uh, the second video, I want to keep uh, more private and secure. This is going to be for the viewing of Jamie and Irvin Ferris and uh, the RCMP, Brenda Lucky. And uh, this would show that uh, the courthouse is most likely uh, participating in uh, the, uh, the hits, organized uh, hits here, organized serial murders of my family and others. So I'll uh, stop that and I'll uh, bring that right now.